Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the memorial service for Lois Elaine Barker. And uh, this morning, um, I would like to deviate from our traditions, if, if you don't mind. And having known Lois for more than 30 years, I don't think she would mind this morning if we do this. Would you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I love you and you can't do nothing about it? Tell him, tell him I love you and you can't do nothing about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. We like to open the uh, service with prayer uh, this morning, so if you would bow your heads with me, we're going to ask God to bless our efforts on today. Amen. Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus for this opportunity. And Lord, we invite your presence to be with us today. Lord, we ask your anointing upon Everything that we do today, every song, every word that's spoken, every prayer. God, may your blessing be with us today as we share this life. Lord, we thank you for this life that you've given. And uh, thank you for your graciousness to give Lois to this family for so many years. Bless our efforts today. And may something that's said or done be a comfort and a blessing to the family and friends that are here today. We ask it today in your name, the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. I'm going to ask Marty, would you come today and uh, bless us with a song? Thank you. Yeah, the green one, please. Turn it up, Brian. The news the doctor gave us As he gave a painful sigh You need to call your family There's just time to say goodbye as we gently try to tell her she'd be leaving any time. The sweetest peace came on her face, and this was her reply. On the other shore, there's millions more that's been waiting there for me. I'll say goodbye for the briefest time, but hellos are eternally. And if the thing can dry your tear-filled eyes, alone in my brand new home, I have family on both sides. We have so many loved ones who have already gone. Each time we heart is broken, each time someone moves on. And even though it hurts to see them go just beyond a Jordan's tide, there's a host of friends and family waiting for them to arrive on that other shore there's millions more that's been waiting there for me i'll say goodbye for the briefest time but hellos are eternally so if the pain i see is meant for me you can dry your tear-filled eyes 
I won't be alone in my brand new home. I have family on both sides. I won't be alone in my brand new home. I have family on both sides, and so do I. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This time we're going to ask Hannah and her daughter if they would come and bless us with a song. He said I could share a few words. Lois was a, a dear friend. i um, known her for more than 18 years. She watched my kids grow up. So um, just wanted to share with you, Revelations 2.10 tells us, Be thou faithful till death, and thou shalt receive a crown of life. So our friend Lois today, she's graduated. She's wearing her crown. And uh, she was a faithful woman. She loved Jesus with all her heart, and she loved her family. And um, she attended our church for 18 years. I said, that's how long I've known her. And many times it was difficult for her to get to church, but she made the effort, and she came, and she was there. And uh, a lot of times she would um, face oppositions because of her faith, and she never gave up. She said, I love Jesus. And she just wanted to serve him and do her best for him. And wherever she went, she rode the bus uh, to get most of the places when she got around, she rode the bus. And know that as she rode the bus, she talked to the people that she rode the bus with. She talked to the bus drivers and she shared her faith. She was a faithful woman. And she was faithful because she had a faithful God. First Thessalonians 5.24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you. And God called Lois to salvation many years ago. I know her parents were uh, faithful Christians, and I don't know what age that Lois was saved, but I know that God called her and that she was faithful to him. And now um, he's called her home, and we miss her. But we can rejoice because she's with the Christ that she served so faithfully when she was here. And this was one of the songs that she always liked me to sing, so I sing for her this morning.
This morning we want to share about the life of Lois Helene Barker. And we, um, I, I want to say that um, once I had a chance to talk to the family, I was amazed at what she had accomplished. But let's start where she was born in Hamlin, Kansas on March 2nd, 1947. But when she was a child, she was in a severe automobile accident. And that is why she was disabled for her, her really her lifetime. Uh, they came out, uh, and, um, somewhere in the sixties, uh, and I guess 1960, they were in Illinois and they came to California in 1968. They lived in Fontana on a chicken ranch. And uh, the father worked for Upland Feed and Fuel, and they had some relatives out here as well. Um, uh, April 1st, 1973, she was married, and she worked in a shoe factory, and she also worked at Goodwill and at home health care. Uh, one of the things I was amazed about, Lois, I found out she had an AA degree from Chafee College. Um, amazing. Amazing. And another thing that at least for a short time, she earned her driver's license. She had her driver's license, but the family said it was a little shaky on her reaction time. So she had to kind of give that up. Um, it's uh, amazing when you see someone that is disabled accomplish the things that she accomplished. Um, uh, often in my daily duties, when I'm having difficulties, I often complain about my situation. And every year I see in the winter and the summer, they have a special Olympics from people who are disabled. And they ski down the mountain at about 90 miles an hour. And some of them are paraplegics or they only have one arm or one leg or whatever. And they accomplish such great things, yet they, they do not have the physical capacity that I do or the average person does. And I am very impressed at all the things that she did in her life. She raised her family in the church. Um, she used to come to our church when she used to live on Washington. Our church was on Cucamonga. And for many years she came there. And um, it was always fun to see her. She would come and bring Gina. And uh, we would go. They, we had picnics and dinners and all kinds of stuff. Um, I wish I could have brought them. We have pictures of her and Gina in costumes. We had a costume party once, and uh, I wish I could find them. I couldn't, <laughs> but uh, it was really special. And um, uh, she attended all of our events that we have at our church. Um, uh, we did Mother's Day, Father's Day. We did picnics and concerts. And those days, uh, many uh, groups, Crownsmen, Southland, Harrisons, and many of you don't know who they are, but they're well-known groups, and they used to come and sing on the weekend. Many churches had them either Friday night, Saturday night, or Sunday. And in those days, you could go to church in the evening on the weekend. But it was a wonderful blessing to have Lois come and and to see her. Um, you'll, you'll have to forgive me for just a few minutes as a pastor. I have so many people give me excuses why they can't come to church. And uh, some of them really don't hold water, but they're going to give me an excuse why they're not here. And yet I would see, uh, even here recently, Lois would come on Sunday night, and she would come down the aisle walking with her cane and come and be seated. And I thought so, she also often had to get a ride from someone to, to get here. And, and I was amazed at that. And I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get in trouble if I go any further, but it's amazing that people don't do things that they're physically capable of. It'd be different if you're injured or ill or you can't be here. But when you're capable of being here, uh, you really should be here. I, I enjoy, um, people and I often try to glean from people. Uh, uh, information, joy, and love, friendship, fellowship, that God has brought them to my life for a reason. Uh, many people that I know are not what we would call physically whole. Some are disabled in, in various ways. I had a good friend many years ago that was disabled, but he was a joy to be around. 
And he used to tell me many expressions that at times it would, it sounds funny, but in his mind it was encouraging. And he told me once, I, brother Jess, I wouldn't hurt you for a million dollars. He said, I might do it for free sometime, but I wouldn't hurt you for a million dollars. And what he meant by it, he wouldn't do it on purpose. And, uh, he was, he was a very dear friend of mine and we did work around the church together. And, um, we had an L shaped church. We had our sanctuary and we had a Sunday school annex. And while we were working, if the phone rang, I would go answer the phone. But when I would go back to get to where I was working, he had locked all the doors because he wanted it to be safe for me. But I don't believe in in what the world calls whole that's necessarily better. I believe that often that broken vessels and people maybe with disabilities can become wonderful friends, wonderful blessings uh, in your life, wonderful things to you. And some of the people I've known are more faithful. And my good friend Warren attended church more often than anybody else I know. If he could be there, he was there. And I enjoy uh, the presence of God. I enjoy friendship. But I also enjoy the lessons that that God has taught me. And um, I was one of the ones years ago that had the opportunity to give Lois a ride to church often on Sunday evening as well. And so I got a chance to get to know her. She labored for her family. Uh, she took care of them and, and, and comforted them and uh, fixed their dinners, did the things they did, but she did it with less capability than most of us have. And I, I can't remember her complaining. I can't remember her telling me that it was too hard or too difficult but she enjoyed her family, loved her family, and uh, always uh, enjoyed to be in the presence of God and in serving the Lord. This morning, while I have just a minute, I want to share a few things that we would call spiritual things. Sometimes when people come to a funeral or memorial service, they do not have the knowledge that the Bible teaches us about spiritual things. And the Bible tells us that when we are born again, that when we die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. In First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, it's Paul the Apostle prayed that our whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved unto the coming of the Lord. In Genesis, it tells us that we were taken from the earth and God breathed a breath in us. And in the Hebrew, that means he put a spirit in us or we are a spirit being. In Ecclesiastes, it says that when we die, our body goes back to the earth, but our spirit goes to God for judgment. And some of the times when I have done services, many people don't know that there is a great reward for a person that's saved. That when you're born again and you've had your spirit regenerated by the Spirit of God and He's imparted the gift of eternal life to you, that you have a great opportunity to spend your eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. When I come to services, I find sometimes it's hard for me uh, to say goodbye to a loved one or a friend. Uh, after pastoring for 27 years, many of my friends and my family have now gone home to be with the Lord. And sometimes it's hard for us to literally say goodbye. But what I've tried to glean from this is that I appreciate the life that he's given. And I learn from their their friendship and their love and their teachings. And then I can pass those things on to other people. I like to share a couple things. My church knows I share these all the time. But my father uh, passed away uh, when I was 16 years old. And so... Um, my father has did not have the opportunity of meeting my wife or my children or anything. And literally, I have waited my whole life to introduce my wife and my children to my dad. It's something that I have longed for my entire life. But my father used to tell me stories. And uh, my father was born in Missouri, and he was raised near the Mississippi River. And he told me he wanted to show his manhood one summer and so he said it took him all summer to get up the courage, but he finally dove in. He was going to swim across the Mississippi. And he told me he swam hour after hour after hour. 
and he got within a hundred yards of the other side and he saw he couldn't make it, so he turned around and swam back. <clears throat> yeah, that is baloney. Yeah, he didn't do that either. He used to tell me he would hunt jackrabbits in Missouri, but he never used a shotgun. What he did is he'd run alongside of them, feel of them. If they were fat enough, he picked them up. If not, he let them go. And anybody's ever seen a jackrabbit, no, you can't even catch it with a Yamaha or a Honda. That's a fact. But my family never met my dad, but I can share with them his character and his friendship. And they can get a little glimpse of who my dad was. And they can tell their children, I have grandchildren now. And he's already told, one boy that's already told his children these stories. And they will tell their grandchildren that they had a wonderful grandfather, great-grandfather. And today I believe that, uh, that you can say today that it has been a wonderful blessing to have Lois as your friend or mother or companion, whatever, that it's been a blessing to know her. And it's been wonderful to see someone with less capabilities than yourself to be able to accomplish so much. And so today I, so today I want to thank God for his wonderful mercy for allowing me to be friends with Lois for more than 30 years. And I want to thank God for her inspiration to me that has encouraged me for a long time. This morning we are going to ask Gina if she'll come. Either you want to come up here. As Pastor Sethill said, my name is Gina, and I am Lois's daughter. On behalf of the Graham and Barker family, I would like to thank you all for being here today to honor her. I would like to take a few minutes to share some memories of my mother. Conversations with my mother via the phone always started something like this. Gina, this is your mother. Listen. And then she would proceed to talk for a really long time about whatever subject she wanted to convey to me. It would crack me up that each and every time I talked to her, she would announce who she was as if I wouldn't recognize her voice. Pretty funny if you ask me, because she's been my mom for 40 years. But that was my mom. As mentioned, when my mom was three months old, she was involved in a car accident and was ejected from the car. She had a severe brain injury and was not expected to survive. This is when she began to show her courage, her enduring spirit, and most importantly, her faith in God. Because of this accident, she had partial paralysis, epilepsy, and learning difficulties. This caused her to have to work harder than the average person just to keep up with the everyday tasks of life. There were times that she did have the I can't do it attitude. But you know what? If you challenged her, watch out. She would prove to you that she could do it. My brother and I are standing examples of that. For instance, it may have taken her about a decade, but she did it receive her associate's degree from Chafee College. Can you imagine the perseverance, the bravery, and the faith in herself that that took? My mother often relied on numerous people in her life to help her with everyday tasks, to run routine errands, to hang pictures in her apartment, everything you can imagine. The greatest thing about all of you here today is that you did those things out of your love for her. One thing about my mom is she sure did know how to surround herself with good people. So thank you to those of you who gave her numerous rides to the store, to church, or anywhere else she needed to go. Your kindness filled her heart with joy, 
and in turn filled mine. My mother never had much to give monetarily, but if you needed something, she would do her best to help you. For example, when I was a kid, I remember there being quite a few families that lived with us during their time of need. She definitely believed in paying her generosity forward. In talking with friends and family over the past few weeks, certain things have struck me about my mom over and over again. So many of you commented about her easy laughter, her smile, and how many times a call from her truly brightened your day. My mother loved people. She would talk to people everywhere. There are people on the street that don't know her name but have said how much she meant to her, them. She loved to laugh, and she loved to sing. Oh, how she loved to sing. When I was a teenager sitting in church, if any of you, well, most of you have, you don't sit with your parents typically. You sit with your friends in the, in the back. <laughs> so I'd be sitting there, and it didn't matter where I was sitting. I could hear my mom over everyone else, including the choir with the microphones. Unfortunately, my mother was rarely on key, but that did not matter to her, because as she would tell me, I am worshiping my Lord and Savior. These are just a few examples of my mom's faith, courage, sense of humor, and her generosity. On February 2nd, Many beloved friends and family greeted her in heaven. Our loss was surely their gain, including my father, who passed away 11 years ago, which I'm sure tried to run the other way. The tragedy of her death will forever be ingrained in all of our minds, but I would like to share with you this one observation from that night. When we finally got to see her in the hospital long after she had passed, I saw such a peaceful look on her face. It was as if 20 years were gone. All the pain and difficulty she had endured in her lifetime was erased because she was truly home where she belongs. Though our relationship was never ideal, and rarely did I listen, it was ours, and I truly miss her standing here today. So I will end with this. Mother, this is your daughter, Gina. Listen, happy birthday, Mom. I hope Grandma made you a real nice cake to celebrate. Thank you for teaching me many things. But most of all, thank you for teaching me what unconditional love means. I love you, and you are missed. Praise the Lord. I want to ask if, uh, Bruce, if you'll play uh, How Great Thou Art. Uh, this is was Lois's favorite song. We're going to play that first, and then after the song, would we do the uh, the pictures, please?
you enjoyed that. What a wonderful blessing. Well, we want to close with a word of prayer this morning. We want, first of all, to invite anyone, everyone that would like to come to a meal afterwards. We're going to go over to the cemetery first for interment, and then we're going to come back here. But I'd like you, after we pray this morning, if you would come and greet the family, and not just today, but in the days and weeks and months ahead, call them, tell them you love them, encourage them, and help them with the loss of this loved one that they've incurred. Would you bow your heads with me, and let's ask God's blessing. Father, we thank you today once again for this life that you've given. And Lord, we ask you to bless each one that's come here today. May we remember this life. May we appreciate what we have, Lord. And may we use our abilities to the best of our effort to become what we really fully should become. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see courage, faith, and hope, and love in action. Lord, may we share the same with our family and friends. May you bless these that have come today. And once again, we thank you for this life you've given. May we show the love that was expressed here today. And we ask it in your name, the the name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Would you come and greet the family? God bless you today.
God walks the dark hills, the ways and the highways, and He walks on the billows, on life's troubled sea. Just to guide you and me And God walks the dark hills Just to guide my footsteps And He walks everywhere By night and by day Just to show me the way And God walks in the storms The rain and the sunshine And He still walks in the shadows Or through glimmering light He helps up the mountains, cross rivers and valleys, and God walks the dark hills, and just to guide you and me, and God walks the dark hills, just to guide Just to show me the way And God walks the dark hills Just to show me the way
beso Father 